the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on this eighth Sunday of Ordinary Time. I am Father John Berteo. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from the Sullivan family from Toronto, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the O'Neill family, originally of Cork City, Ireland. In particular, the soul of Kathleen Sullivan, the last of the O'Neills and their spouses. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We also pray for the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of all the O'Neills. May they be blessed with the gifts of hope, peace, good memories, and be examples of their loved ones. On behalf of all who are gathered for the sacred celebration, we thank the Sullivan family for the gift of this Mass that we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. On this last Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us pause for a moment and ask our merciful God to bless each one of us by forgiving us our sins, that we may be able to prepare, or may be able to forgive others as well. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ of mercy. You are, <coughs> you are seated at the right hand of the Father, to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Together, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, we pray that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. <clears throat> when a sieve is shaken, the refuse appears. So do one's fault when one speaks. The kiln tests the potter's vessels. So the test of the just person is in tribulation. Its fruit discloses the cultivation of a tree. So a person's speech discloses the cultivation of the mind. Do not praise someone before they speak, for this is the way people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see, you see the speck in your neighbor's eye? but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrites, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from the humble bush. Out of the good treasure of the heart, the good person produces good. And out out of evil treasure, the evil person produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you are in the same wavelength or the same boat that I'm in, that so many times we, I, I stop to think on how truly, truly blessed I am to have in my life, and maybe in your life as well, the Bible. The Bible, and when we read it and understand it and live it, it has a solution for every situation in life. Both those experiences that outwards, physically, that we do and, and so on, 
And how about the ones that are deep down in our conscience? They help us to realize them. So today's gospel passage from Luke guides us to look at ourselves from within before doing that thing that sometimes we do, pointing a finger at others. There's St. Bede the Venerable, who uh, lived in the UK in the 8th century, left us this beautiful reflection to deal with this gospel. And I quote, The treasure of the heart is the same as the root of the tree. It's hidden. He also writes, A person who has a treasure of patience and perfect charity in his heart yields excellent fruit. He loves his neighbor and has all the other qualities that Jesus teaches. He loves his enemies, he continues, does good to the one who hates him, prays for him, prays for him. He gives to those who ask, wishes not to judge and does not condemn, and he corrects patiently and affectionately those who make mistakes. Just, just a few examples of some saint be the venerable to live as Jesus did. Not all of them are easy, but possible. Can you compare to any of these or think of these that you have lived in your life? I'm sure you can think of more than one, especially the one of forgiving the enemies. And then more recent, just in the last well, last century, one of my favorite people in history was St. John the Twenty-Third, who was Pope from 1958 to 1963. Although he was only Pope for five years, however, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and lots of prayer, he started the transformation of the Church as we had it for many, many centuries, calling the, con the convening of the Second Vatican Council, also known as Vatican II. This was when we, the priests, and all the faithful were able to attend Mass in our own language anywhere in the world, as well as many other changes that we continue to live as we go through our lives, living the Vatican's II, even to this day. Maybe, if you haven't already, maybe get to know a little more about this wonderful saint, St. John the Twenty-Third. There are many books written on him and his life, but there's one that really struck me, and it's also on the CD. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in getting to know more about him, I, I don't like advertising too many things, but this one is really worth to, to gain a lot of the wisdom that he had in the spirituality. There's a CD out there called... Uh, the Revolution of John the Twenty-Third, the Second Vatican Council by Ignatius Press. So if you're interested in checking this out, please call our office and they will inform you on how to maybe get a copy of the CD or maybe even one of the books. It's really worth, worth reading and enriches our spiritual life and how wonderful this man was in, in, in living the gospel that Jesus talks about today, forgiving accepting and being patient. Like Jesus and St. Bede, St. John 23rd was an example of a life that we too can live. He didn't live the impossible. He lived the possible because he was focused, as I've said many times, he was focused on Jesus the Christ above and beyond anything. So may I suggest that we continue to, if not, already, live, forgive your enemies, pray for them, and also don't forget, don't judge others, and you will not be judged. Amen. Please join me as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer intentions for the month of February, we pray for those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, that they may find relief and healing through Jesus the Christ. We pray to the Lord. For Francis, our Pope, and all in leadership positions in the church, that they may also be examples of Jesus' love humility, and courage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like St. John the 23rd, we may have Jesus in focus every day of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the living and deceased members of the Sullivan family in Toronto, Ontario, and for all of our sponsors of the TV Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that they may rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary's gentle guidance every day of our lives, we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for as you goodness have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbleth himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for if you can have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. God, Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and the Lord is name, for the good of all of his Holy Church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us, the source of merit, may also help us to attain merit's reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of, our, of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hoped for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, our Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints you please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. If there is someone in your life that you wish to grant peace to, this is a time in a very special way to the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Wish them a peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to enter the land, but only to 
I only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. I think I already shared with you a couple of times that uh, every day I try to read about a saint in the lives of the saints, a little book that I get, one online and one in, in hardcover. And uh, it's so good to, to find out about people who lived, who did almost the impossible in our lifetime, make it the possible, the forgiving, the loving, and so on. And like I said at the homily, St. John 23rd was a gentleman, he was a pope, a priest, but most of all, a lover of Jesus Christ and his blessed mother. And if you have a chance to read the book, good for you from Ignatius Press. If not the CD, it's probably even better. And it's so, so refreshing because when we read and get to know about the saints, we get to know also how they made their way to heaven because we want to do the same thing too. Maybe as Lent comes up, maybe you can take up some more reading. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Eucharist in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Make me a channel of your where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. 